Okay, this is the free response uh, question number one on the 2011 AP Calculus AB exam. All right, initially reading the question, in the interval 0 to 6, a particle is moving along the x-axis. So as long as it's moving to the right, the velocity is positive. When it moves to the left, the velocity is negative. Its position is not explicitly given, but the velocity is given here as a sine function with the argument being uh, exponential. And then the acceleration is also given. So I'm going to put both of these in my calculator. So I'm going to set uh, y1 equal to the velocity function and y2 equal to the acceleration function. And then we notice for position, position of a particle at any point in time is going to be this equation right here. It's going to be x as a function of time is equal to the initial x at 0 plus whatever the integral velocity is from 0 to that given time. There's the overview. We're ready to tackle the independent parts. Part A is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at the time t equals 5.5. Give a reason for your answer. Okay, we determine increasing or decreasing based on the signs of v of 5.5 and a of 5.5. If they're both uh, positive or they're both negative, it'll be increasing. And if they're different signs, then we know it'll be decreasing. So, first, we do v of 5.5, which is y1 of 5.5 in my calculator. I evaluate that and I get a value of negative 0 0.453. Then we evaluate a of 5.5, which is y2 in my calculator, and then I get a value of negative 1.359. And since both the velocity and the acceleration at 5.5 units of time are negative, that means the function is e increasing. So that is my final answer. Okay, we're on to part B. Find the average velocity of the particle for the time period 0 to 6. Well, first of all, I'm going to write down the average velocity formula. So here we go. V average is going to equal uh, 1 6, which is 1 over B minus A, times the integral from A to B of v of t dt. So in this equation, since we're going to go from 0 to 6, that means this is 1 over 6 minus 0, which is 1 6. We're going to integrate velocity from 0 to 6. And we put that into the calculator. This is the integral of uh, y1 from 0 to 6. And the most important thing to remember that I tend to forget is to multiply that result times 1 6. In doing so, though, we get a value of 1.949. Okay, that will conclude part B. Find the total distance traveled by the particle from the time t equals 0 to t equals 6. All right, displacement's actually the integral of the velocity function. Distance is its scalar equivalent. So that's going to be uh, absolute value. So the way this is working is going to the distance for any time interval is going to be the integral from a to b of the absolute value of velocity with respect to time. And we want to do this in the interval from 0 to 6. So we put those in. The trick there is putting this into your calculator correctly for whatever model calculator you're using. But when done correctly, we end up with the value of 12.573. And that concludes Part C. Part D. In the interval 0 to 6, the particle changes direction exactly once. That means there's one zero for velocity, okay, in the interval 0 to 6. Find the position of the particle at that time. Okay, so our first step here is actually to find the 0 for the velocity. So we set uh, uh, V of T, which is Y1 in my calculator. I went to the graphing screen. I did 0 to 6 for my domain of my window, then did a zoom fit, and then uh, solve for the root. And my calculator told me, hey, this is at a point uh, 5.196 units of time. And then I stored that to A. Okay. So now, going back to our position equation we discussed on the first slide, the overview, I said, hey, x as a function of time is equal to x sub 0, or x of 0, okay, plus the integral of v of t dt from 0 to A. So this is the change in position from time equals 0 to time equals 5.196. In doing so, I substitute here. 
so x of 0 is given to me as 2. And in the, my calculator here, integrating y1 from 0 to a, I get a value of 12.135. So my final answer, 4.136, or I'm sorry, 4.135. And that, very quickly, concludes uh, question number one on the 2011 AP exam. I hope you got something useful out of this video.